right right about now the funk soul brother check it out now the funk soul brother right about now the funk soul brother check it out now the funk soul brother right about now the funk soul brother check it out now the funk soul brother right about now the funk soul brother right about now what is poppin' yo? It's me at Clapboy Bells. Welcome to another episode of Wisco Sports Weekly, where in this episode we're going to be discussing the Big East Tournament predictions. What I think will happen coming out of the Big East and who will get an automatic bid in this year's March Madness. Of course, probably maybe later today or t sometime tomorrow, I will be doing my video on the Big Ten. So, of course, stay tuned for that. But, of course, this video is just Big East in itself. This has been a very interesting season. Obviously, a lot of big surprise teams. Villanova having, honestly, their, the worst season they've had in a while. And Marquette, the big surprise, ending up winning the regular season for the Big East. It's just been a very crazy year. And honestly, I have no idea what to expect. So, obviously, without further ado, let's get down to business. So, if you like what you see, subscribe below, comment with your thoughts, and let's get down to business. Going on to the first round, three matchups on Wednesday, March 18th. First off, we have 8th seeded St. John's taking on 9th seeded Butler. St. John's is led by Joel Soriano, who had a really bouncing second year, and he's really come on huge. Obviously, St. John's is a very young team. The only thing that they can do, they, have, can, they can really play great offense, but the problem is their defense is what really causes them to lose a lot of games. They really started out... Well, they actually were like, I think, 10-0 to start the year. And then re then they really started to lose games once they got into their conference. So, obviously, we know St. John's really isn't the greatest team. But they can really show up when they need it. Butler, on the other hand, you know, they got a, they have a very mid-team as well. Manny Bates, Jaden Taylor, Chuck Harris, Simos Lacosis. Some good guys on that team that can really provide some scoring. But... They are good at defense, but not offense. So when I look at this, these two teams, honestly, they, these two I think they split in the regular season. But if I had to pick between the two, I feel like Butler really is just good for their defense. Their offense can be a little stagnant at times. But even though St. John's defense can be bad, I don't. I feel like their offense can really show against teams. I say St. John's beats Butler. I will advance to play Marquette, which they actually just played an unbelievable game against them. Next up, we have 7th seeded Seton Hall versus 10th seeded DePaul. Seton Hall is just not one player is averaging their, their best player averages only 12 points. They have like the one of the weakest offenses probably in the Big East this year. DePaul, on the other hand, Omoja Gibson obviously is averaging 16 points a season despite DePaul having an absolutely abysmal, awful year. Um, but, you know, DePaul... You know, they're not they're not a very well constructed team. Their team is pretty much led by all seniors. So pretty much DePaul is really gonna be going on to a rebuilding phase at some point. Seton Hall, despite them not really have much offense, they do play some very well good defense, and I'm assuming they should defeat DePaul. Um and they will advance to play Xavier. Next up, Villanova taking on Georgetown. This is the first time we've ever actually seen Villanova have a very disappointing year, despite lots of people still being part of that team. Obviously, they missed out on Justin Moore for half the season, but he's still there. Justin Moore, Brandon Slater, Caleb Daniels, Eric Dixon, and obviously five-star freshman Cam Whitmore. You know, Villanova, you know, they started out very bad, and then they actually started to win some games in the second half of the season. They've been doing a lot better. Georgetown... Wow, what a terrible season they have had. Obviously, Primo Spears has been the obviously star of this team, but Georgetown has just had one of the worst seasons ever. Just despite, you know, I I respect pa Patrick Ewing as a player, but let's be real. It just I don't know, he must not be able to be that good of a coach. Villanova should beat Georgetown. Georgetown just hasn't been able to squeak out a win this season, so I'll say Villanova gets the win and will face Creighton. So, First round is complete. Let's go on to the quarterfinals. All games, a triple header on FS1. That will be on Thursday, March 9th. So Marquette will take on St. John's. 
both these teams. Marquette swept this team this year. And Marquette and St. John's, that last game was just a couple days ago. And Marquette almost blew it in the final 30 seconds. They were up by 10, and St. John's came back and almost tied the game. And that game almost went to overtime. I don't think Marquette wants to have something like that happen again. Marquette has a lack of not being able to really finish their games. The problem is they are right in the middle of offense and defense. Their offense is led by point guard Tyler Kolick, who probably will be named Big East Player of the Se- the, the Big East Player of the Year. And from what I see, if obviously we see Marquette really play with some good offense, Tyler Kolick can really take charge. Ever since he's really been showing up with offensively, Marquette's just been unstoppable. I think that they should beat St. John's again if that is the case and advance to semifinals because they are a very good team. I expect them to do that because obviously Marquette has shown if they are one of the best, if they are the best team in the Big East, they need to show it here. But this is going to be an all-out offensive brawl. But I think Marquette is going to win this one. Then we got UConn versus Providence. Uh, UConn, led by Udama Sonogo and Jordan Hawkins, two guys that are likely going to be in the NBA next season. And Providence is led by Bryce Hopkins, another guy that will likely be in the NBA next this year. So, obviously, this should be a great matchup. But Providence has really gone downhill the last couple, the last week. They've lost a lot of games, and I'm starting to obviously see that UConn is a very good team. So... Even though UConn is not a good road team, they are obviously a great home team. That's the only thing that I can see be a problem. But I think Providence has just been playing really bad as of lately for this last week. And I think UConn has the better advantage. So I say UConn will advance to play Marquette in the semifinals. Next up, Xavier taking on Seton Hall. Xavier obviously is led by transfer Suli Boom has been really great. Jack Nunge has also been great. Colby Jones has been great. This is a really great team. Obviously, the only thing that is a little bit of an issue is that Zach Fremantle had an injury, so you don't even know when he's even going to come back. And they obviously... Xavier probably has the most complete team in the Big Ten. But facing a team like Seton Hall that has no offense, Xavier should be easily winning this matchup. Absolutely. Next up, we have Creighton taking on Villanova. Creighton led by center, uh, Creighton is led by Ryan Kalkbrenner, their center, and obviously had a very disappointing start to their season. They were expected to finish first, I believe, this season in the Big East, but Paul Kalkbrenner had some a bit of an injury issues, and obviously some of the other guys really couldn't step up. Ryan Nemhart, Trey Alexander. Baylor Shireman, Arthur Kaluma, those are some good guys that really are some great role players. This is a very great starting five, and I feel like Creighton can really take up the pace with whoever they're playing. However, I think Villanova actually has the experience. Eric Dixon, obviously except Cam Whitmore because he's a freshman, but all the guys that Villanova have on their team, I think have experience. And despite Creighton not having the greatest season, the thing that really stands out to Villanova is they have a better bench than Creighton. Creighton's bench is absolutely terrible. They have nobody that can do anything, and they only rely on their starters to really get them anything. When it comes between the two, I think Villanova, despite playing better in the second half of the season, I say Villanova will defeat Creighton and actually get the upset here. So let's go on to the semifinals right now. Marquette taking on UConn. As someone that's from Milwaukee, I really want to see Marquette succeed. However, that last matchup against UConn, UConn absolutely dismantled them. I know they were at their home. That was last time Marquette lost a game. And this is very difficult to really think about because I want to sit there and say, oh, I want Marquette to win this, but do I really see them being able to take control of this? So as I look between these two teams, I unfortunately have to pick UConn. I think Marquette, even though I've been obviously hoping Marquette wins and does stuff in this tournament this year. I think UConn right now is being underlooked and undervalued. And I think Marquette has yet to lose a game. And I think right here, because yet, first off, I think the game against St. John's is going to tire them so much. Playing the day later against a team like UConn is just going to tire Marquette out. And I think UConn will advance to the final. Then we got Xavier and Villanova. 
then Lenovo actually beat Xavier in their last matchup, which is actually very shocking because no one would have ever suggested that in the first place. But Xavier, I feel like if they get Fremantle back, they should be able to defeat Lenovo because Xavier is a very talented team, and I think they can do this. But if not, I think Villanova can win them again. Villanova has been able to really keep close, but I don't necessarily see them winning twice. If Xavier is the good team that they are, I say Xavier will defeat Villanova. So Xavier goes on to play UConn. So I think both these two teams did split, obviously home and away. But if I had to pick between the two, I don't know really who to pick between these two, being UConn and obviously um, uh, Xavier. So if I had to pick between this final matchup, I feel like the better team of these two, I think, is Xavier. I think Xavier will defeat UConn. I think UConn is a good enough team, but I think Xavier is the more complete team when it comes to that. And that being said, I think Xavier will win the Big East Tournament. So, if you like what you see, subscribe below, comment with your thoughts, and of course, you'll probably see me just a little bit later as I make my Big Ten predictions. So, we'll see you next time.